What's good everybody and welcome back to yet another car review here on the driveway where this week we have been out and about in the brand new 2021 Kia Seltos. It is so insane to know that these models are already starting to arrive on the market. Now if you are somebody who likes their cars to be fun, funky, and unique, then stay tuned because in this review we're going to take her for a spin and show you everything you need to know about the newest member of Kia's crossover family. All right, boys and girls, so welcome aboard the all new 2021 Kia Seltos. Now, it is blowing my mind the fact that we're only five months or so into the new year and we are already seeing these 2021 models on the market. It is just insane. But the first point that I definitely wanted to start with with this new car is its price point. Because as many people who have been shopping around over the past few years or so may know, Kia and its sister company Hyundai have definitely made a mark by offering vehicles that basically offer everything you need and then some at one of the best price points in the market and the new Seltos is no exception and handily to prove that point Kia of course has given me the Moroni sticker for the car that we're driving today now the one that we're in is the most loaded example of the Seltos you can buy this is an SX turbo all-wheel drive and quite frankly there are pretty much no options on this car whatsoever everything you're gonna see in the review today is all standard the only two additional charges that we have on this car are the two-tone star bright yellow and black cherry uh, exterior paint and a $130 charge for carpeted floor mats but we already talked about how insane that is now the starting MSRP on this car before those additional charges is twenty seven thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars factor in a one hundred uh, one thousand one hundred and twenty dollar inland freight and handling charge and you're looking at a total MSRP on this one of twenty nine thousand four hundred and eighty five dollars so under thirty grand for a compact crossover that offers you basically everything you could ever want now while the features and the design of this car may be great the the driving profile is a little bit of a different story, so let's get this baby on the road and see what she's like. So I've been driving this new Seltos for close to a week now, and in that time frame, I've come up with the perfect description for this car. It's like looking at somebody who's 65 years old, but they've just had the most modern day plastic surgery that you could think of, so they look about half that age. And while the exterior and the interior of the Seltos definitely feel modern day, there's one aspect of it that really does feel a bit dated, and that is what powers this car. Now, in the normal Seltos, like the LX, the S, or the EX, you can get a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder with just shy of about 150 horsepower, and they come crucial with Kia's new intelligent variable transmission, which is kind of their fancy continuously variable transmission. However, if you opt for the turbo model, like this one, you'll be getting a 1.6 liter turbocharged and direct injected four cylinder engine with things like a twin scroll turbocharger added to it. Now it makes a rather stout 175 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque, which are pretty much exactly the same numbers that this engine has had since it first was introduced back in 2013. Now again, it's gone through some iterations, but continuing to use an engine that's that old does not exactly make sense when you have a car that looks as modern as 
this. But what is my real complaint with this powertrain is the transmission. Now in the turbo, you're gonna get the seven speed quick shift dual clutch transmission. Now I'm a fan of DCTs. I love them for high performance reasons, but when you're using them in a compact crossover like this, to me, it just doesn't make sense. It shudders when you take off. I've had it malfunction on me at least once during the week that I've had this car, and it just doesn't feel like it's the most suited transmission for this particular type of vehicle. Now, even with the sort of aging powertrain, the gas mileage for this all-wheel drive example is actually pretty good. 25 in the city and 30 miles per gallon on the highway running on regular unleaded gas. You don't even have to put the highest grade in it. Being a short wheelbase car, it is nice and agile and nimble. The steering system is a lot more responsive than I expected it to be, especially now that Kia has installed the torque vectoring system for the electric power steering in this car. Now, granted, I'm driving it around in smart mode right now, which basically learns how you drive as you go along, and so it is a little bit on the lenient side, but with it being such a short wheelbase car, even in its most docile settings, it actually feels quite nippy, and it's not just down to the turbo model that I have here. I've actually, off camera, had the chance to drive a normal version of one of these, and it feels just as responsive as the turbo model that I have here. Now, also, the advantage of being a short wheelbase car is that you can park it pretty much anywhere. If you live in a downtown area where parking spaces are the size of a few motorcycles, then you could absolutely park this car without any issue. Now, the other benefit that I like about this car is that it actually is quite roomy in here. I'm six foot one. I was expecting to be crammed in here like a sardine. But on the flip side, I've actually had quite the pleasurable driving experience with this. So it's fun to drive, it's light on its feet, and it's perfect for the urban explorer who needs a little bit more utility in their life. But if you are looking for a vehicle that properly draws some attention to yourself, and maybe you like thinking like Doug DeMuro with some quirks and features, then it's time we pull over and have a chat about the way that this car looks. Now, while there's a lot of fun to be had in driving the new Seltos, I think we can say that the most unique aspect of this thing is the way that this car looks. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the design is not only unique, but it's very youthful, especially when you get it in a funky color like the two-tone star bright yellow with the cherry black roof that I have on this test car of mine here. But as far as the features go, with this being the fully loaded model, all of them are as modern as you would expect. For example, the headlights themselves are full LED LED, so you have LED daytime running lights, LED main beams with auto high beam assist. Part of the daytime running lights actually run into the top of the grill here. Now that is actually a standard feature on both the S and SX turbos. So if you want to have a little bit more flash to the front of your uh, Seltos here, you can get that as an available option. You do have the LED turn signals uh, curving up along the bottom here and then LED fog lights located down here at the bottom as well. And not to mention dominating pretty much the entire front end is a very uniquely styled version of Kia's Tiger Nose grille. Now, of course, this car is chock full of active safety features as well. Uh, so you have sensors behind the grille and up at the top of the windshield for things like uh, the all-speed radar cruise control and the lane departure warning with active steering assist. Now, in terms of Kia's modern crossover lineup, this is the second smallest crossover that they currently make. The only one smaller being the Soul. Now, from the side, again, it does have a very modern profile, and I'll tell you what accents that even more are these. The 18-inch machine-faced and dark gray painted aluminum alloy wheels. These are standard on the S and SS uh, SX turbo models, and I love the little red center caps that Kia uh, has given these as well. You have four-wheel disc brakes underneath, McPherson strut suspension in front, multi-link suspension out back, and in this case, as you can see by the badge up here on the fender, this one has their optional all-wheel drive system, which basically, like all other all-wheel drives, is a system that, with the locking feature in place, allows you a little bit better traction at slower speeds in poor driving conditions. Now, when looking at this car from the side, of course, you're not going to get any kind of elegant swoops or curves or anything like that. However, you do get a lot of the modern day conveniences like I was already mentioning. Now, this being the fully loaded trim with the optional two-tone paint, one of the things I like is that they blacked out the mirror caps to match the black roof. The mirrors themselves do have the LED turn signals as well as standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, as you can see the icon right there. Also, standard on pretty much all of the uh, 
Seltos models with the exception of only a couple is Kia's remote access system. So you have the buttons here on the doors. Those are used for locking and unlocking the vehicle. And I love the design of the key fob itself. As Doug Namuro put it, it looks like a grenade launcher. You have the big lock button up here on the top, unlock, you have panic. You do not get a power tailgate on any of the Seltos models, which is a bit interesting to say the least. However, on my test car, we do have the optional remote start system to go along with all of that. Now, as polarizing as the front end of this car is, I will say that I wasn't exactly a fan of it from the back, but after spending some time and looking at it, I realized I was just prejudging. You do have partial LED taillights back here. So you have the main LED brake light, but you do have incandescent turn signals back here, LED reverse lights hidden into the beautiful silver strip that kind of breaks up the back of the trunk here. And one fun note is as you go down towards the back, first off, there's no rear park assist on this car, just a standard backup camera that's hidden here above uh, underneath the Kia logo, but it almost looks like this car has dual exhaust outlets, but unfortunately those are just fake. That's part of the styling of the rear bumper itself. The actual exhaust outlet comes out somewhere around in there. So the lower right hand corner, just a single exhaust outlet to say the least. Now this is still a compact crossover. So of course you got to have the utilitarian side of it to go with it. And when you open up the trunk, you actually open up to a pretty sizable space overall. The numbers on paper, you're looking at 26 6.6 cubic feet of space total. You do have a little cargo partition here to prevent people from looking in uh, through the rear hatch, seeing what you've got here in the back. But the real magic happens when you fold down those 60-40 split fold seats because that suddenly increases it to almost 63 cubic feet of space, which makes it about as uh, practical as a much bigger crossover, something more mid-size rather than compact like this. So if you want something utilitarian, but you don't want to switch to a bigger crossover, the Seltos has you covered when it comes to hauling your stuff. Now, while I love the outside of the Seltos and its fun and funky attitude, when it comes to its interior, I kind of was expecting a little bit more flair, but maybe that's just me being a little bit nitpicky, but also some materials don't exactly feel to the highest quality. And it actually starts with the seats in this car. Now the SX Turbo that I'm driving has the Sofino leatherette upholstery inside. And I really kind of wish these were actual leather seats. I know that might increase the price just a little bit, but when you actually feel the seats, they almost feel kind of like vinyl or rubber. They don't actually have that sort of leather-like feel that some other people have been uh, been able to imitate so far. So that was a bit of a disappointment. However, the driver's seat is power adjustable. So you have the distance, you can raise the front of the seat up like this if you need to. Uh, you have the distance or the uh, recline as well as the two-way lumbar support to go along with it. And then if you come over here to the door, you do have uh, at least your typical powered controls. So you have your power mirrors, your door locks, you have an automatic driver's window in this one, but the rest of the uh, windows are not one touch auto. And then you have the window locks as well. Now, once you're actually in the driver's seat of the Seltos, again, some parts in here do feel kind of familiar. Things like the design of the three-spoke steering wheel, the way the gauge cluster looks up there with the giant thin film transistor display in the middle. There are some updated things such as the 10.25 inch uh, infotainment display, which we'll get to uh, the functions of a little bit later on, but the steering wheel controls and everything else are exactly as you would expect. So over here on the right, uh, you have the majority, if not all of the functions for the all-speed radar cruise control. You have the up and down arrow that controls all the functions in the info or in the uh, info display up there in your gauge cluster the distance sensor and steering controls for the radar cruise control and lane assist are uh, also over here as well as on the left you have your hands-free bluetooth uh, radio controls voice activated controls and so on and then as you come down underneath uh, this is a tilting uh, tilting and telescoping steering wheel so you have the latch down here on the lower left and then as you come all the way over you do have a couple of other buttons worth mentioning. So you have one that is giant, which controls the auto start stop system in this car, um, which is a little bit interesting. I'm not a fan of auto start stop systems, but all the same Kia does include it in this car as standard instrumentation dimming. Uh, your lane departure warning is over here as well, along with the button to control the stability control. 
Now, one of the biggest technological advancements here in the Seltos, I would say, is the infotainment display here in the middle. A lot of Kias that I've seen over the past couple of years, the screen's about seven, eight inches in size, something like that. This is a 10.25 inch multimedia display here in the middle. And while it looks a little bit interesting with three different tabs up here in the front, if you wanna access all the functions in the system, you just simply swipe to the right. You come up with a full size menu in here. You have things such as the Kia Your Voice Control, Bluetooth Telephone, navigating different destinations. You have a sounds of nature function. So if you want to sit in your car for a little bit, have a little bit more of a calming atmosphere, you can put that on. You have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Both of those are standard on here. You also have a sound mood lighting uh, that goes along with the radio system. So you actually have lights uh, within the speakers and stuff over here on the doors. HD radio, voice memos, Bluetooth media, it's all there. Now, the one thing I don't get is why people are still putting navigation systems in their cars these days. It's pretty much pointless since you have things like Google Maps, Waze, stuff like that that's already been implemented through Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But you do have some physical buttons down here as well. So you have the map button, different navigation uh, setups. You can do, uh, you can favorite rather certain functions within the system. You push the star button and that takes you to a separate menu in and of itself. Seek track functions, different radio settings, AM, FM, Sirius XM, satellite radio, different media settings such as that sounds of nature, Bluetooth media, and so on and finally just a general setup for the infotainment system itself. Now, of course, aside from playing around with the most modern infotainment system, the other thing that I've loved about this car is its Bose premium audio system. You guys know me. I love my music and I love being able to play it crisp, clear with a good bit of bass. And the Bose audio system in this definitely delivers on all those fronts. <laughs> Now, while the infotainment system in and of itself is pretty darn good, I will say that aside from the fact that I still think the GPS system is pointless and I do love the overall size of the screen, there is one area of this car that was a little bit more of a letdown to me and that was the actual climate control system in this car, which I was kind of expecting a dual zone system. I mean, this is the SX model after all, so the most loaded of the bunch. I was kind of expecting a dual zone system up here, but overall, I mean, you just have your automatic function, uh, your temperature control over here on the left, things like turning it off, front and rear defrost, climate zones, uh, air recycling, and also your fan speeds, not to mention the AC button itself are all located here on the bottom with a nice little LCD screen to go across the top. As you come down further, this is actually a pretty interesting thing. So you have a nice little cubby hole here uh, in the bottom. You can put things like your phone, your wallet, all that kind of stuff. You have one USB charging port there on the right with the USB connector for things like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay located in the middle, and one 12 volt, 100 an 80 watt plug-in outlet over here on the left, but they also did include standard wireless charging in this car, which is actually this little shelf up here. So if you have a more modern phone, you can actually take it and slide it all the way in this little area right here without having to uh, be worried about digging it out from things in the cubby underneath. Now, if you like even more simplicity in your car's interior, then take a look down here at the Seltos' center console. For starters, you have your heated seats on either side of the shifter. Again, that controls that seven-speed uh, dual-clutch automatic. Of course, like I said, it does have a standard backup camera, so you pop it in reverse. Uh, you do get the typical backup camera. Uh, it does include guidance lines, so when you turn the steering wheel, of course, as you can see, uh, the lines do follow whichever direction you're turning. You do have the automatic door locks as well, so if you put it in any uh, gear other than park the doors will lock the moment you put it in park though you do hear the doors unlock, meaning people can exit safely. Now, you do also have a couple of other functions down here. You have the hill descent control over here on the right, as well as the locking function uh, for that uh, optional all-wheel drive system. So when you put it in locking mode, of course, you will get an indication up there, up on the dash. And again, that's a system that basically maintains a lot better traction at slower speeds uh, when the road conditions become too poor for regular two-wheel drive vehicles. Back here in the back of the center console, 
console. You do have a couple of other things. You have an electronic parking brake with the auto brake hold function. Uh, so you can leave the car and drive when you pull up to a stop. Even with the auto start stop as, uh, system engaged, you can leave it in drive and you can take your foot off the brake pedal and the, and the uh, car will be held completely still. I do have a couple of sizable cup holders in here. So a 20 fluid ounce bottle of soda and the large McDonald's Coke should fit in there just fine. Or even a bigger drink like your double gulp from your local convenience store. And then you do have a small but sizable center console back here. So you open it up. Uh, you can see I've got my GoPro equipment in there as well as a few other odds and ends. So overall, you do have plentiful amounts of storage between at least the cubby up there and the center console in the middle. Now, even though I was saying earlier that this is the second smallest crossover in Kia's current lineup, the back seat space in this car is just as surprising as it is up in the front. Now, I wouldn't say that anybody like six foot, six foot one, or six foot two or taller uh, would be able to fit back here comfortably, but all the same, you do have the indentions in the back of the seat here. Uh, again, I'm six foot one, so not a problem for me there. I do have a smaller little cubby down here in the back so you can put your phone down there, especially if you're charging it with the one rear USB. USB port. If you want to store your drinks, you do have a sizable little center console here. So two little cup holders there in the middle. Again, no rear heated seats, no anything like that. This is a sub $30,000 compact crossover. So if you're expecting more luxury features from a loaded trim, you might want to go with one of Kia's bigger crossovers instead. Well, everyone, that wraps up our review and drive of the all-new 2021 Kia Seltos SX Turbo All-Wheel Drive. I do hope you guys have enjoyed this review as much as I have, and if you did, please do give it a thumbs up, and also, while you're at it, hit that subscribe button down below, because trust me, it will benefit the both of us in the end. At the end of the day, though, I have to give a huge thanks to my friends at Kia USA for providing us the opportunity to drive their brand new small crossover for an entire week. But in the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review, and I'll see you all next time. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.